It's Des here. I'm in Pittsburgh in America. I'm at Share 2019 and I have the pleasure of being joined by Deborah Carbo. Deborah, great to see you. Great to meet you in person. Thanks for making time to catch up with me. Thanks for inviting me. Now you are the Director of Product Management at Broadcom's mainframe division. I'd like to get into the detail of what that role actually encompasses because it seems like a very broad role. Uh, and then I'd like to ask you some questions around what you're doing around skills development, some of the challenges that the industry is facing in that yep. space, whether some of it's real or not, uh, put a little bit of reality into it. And then look at, uh, I guess, what you're doing with some of the stuff around the Vitality program, the AOC program, and, and, and so forth. Get your insights on Share the event itself. And then uh, the Women in IT breakfast you attended. Sure. And then you had a great comment that I'd like to uh, wrap up on, which is the, the responsibility that sits with the customers or the end users. So let's maybe just start with your role in general. Maybe just give us a little insight into kind of what your role encompasses and what you cover and uh, what you're responsible for. I'm so happy to do that for you. Um, so I have about uh, 20 years background in mainframe, working for IBM and now I'm with Broadcom. And what I'm responsible for is bringing products to market successfully and solving our customers' problems. Right. You know, critical problems that involve, you know, performance and security and other related um, solutions to manage workload that mm -hmm. um, keep businesses running. Um, product management is um, a strategic role and working with customers directly and finding out what their problems are is forge really mm -hmm. our success. Now, it's, a, a, it's an extremely broad role and, and I think uh, there must, there's probably no day that you don't just jump out of bed and want to do this because uh, just, just talking to you off camera, the energy and the, the vibrancy that you bring to this thing, uh, I, I guess, you know, um, relays the, the, the fun that you have in your job and also yeah. I guess, you know, how much fun it is to work inside the Broadcom world because uh, your colleagues are just as excited about their roles and that speaks volumes about the business and the brand itself. It does, it certainly does. Now, there are a couple of big topics um, that I want to just quickly dive into uh, in brief. I mean, we hear a lot about modernization mainframe platform and, and particularly optimization of the operation of those and then focus around things like security in your world you've got a lot of focus on um, workload management and, and the database environments give us a little insight into those two areas that you're focused on in particular around the database space and then workload management what do they entail and what do they sure. actually mean to as far as customers go oh absolutely so in Broadcom IDMS and Datacom are the two foundational database management mm -hmm. systems that um, many many customers worldwide are dependent on and have built a tremendous amount of workload around right. um, it is the system of record certainly for all of uh, their business mission critical uh, areas, many transactions, yep. governments, um, entire countries, right, are mm -hmm. dependent on the data that's in these databases. And workload management is really about um, managing the environment as efficiently as possible and ensuring that priority is given to the most critical workloads. Right. You know, so these are types, infrastructure types of products. I mean, I'm responsible for many other products as well, which include some uh, DevOps and, and other solutions and offerings. But I would say from a mission critical perspective, some of the ones I just mentioned are, are by far um, uh, They're like foundational requirements that you've just got to have. Right? Absolutely. You've got to count them every single day. And, and on the minds of our customers that they are resilient and reliable and that they can scale right, right when there's explosions of data movement. I love it. Well, it's a big challenge. Now, there's a, a big focus here on skills um, development and, and I guess uh, the, you mentioned this phrase of succession planning, this idea of getting things out of the minds and hearts of potentially up to five different generations uh, from some of the boomers <laughs> and the Gen X yeah. to, to sort of, you know, uh, uh, millennials and, and, and Gen Zs and everything between. Um, give us some insight into kind of what's happening in that space. I know you've got the Vitality program, it's made up of three components of sort of getting on board and learning about mainframes and familiarity and then the uh, the, the associate software engineer component and then the mentoring out into the market. Um, but you, you touched on a really great point around succession planning. I'd love to get your thoughts on kind of where that fits in, into all of this because I, I think there's a lot of gray areas in the space around skills development that people think they understand it and know it. Yeah. But I, I, I love the point you raised with regard to passing on that knowledge and that succession planning component. Give us some insight into kind of what yeah. your thoughts are there and where that fits into the overall program. So when we speak with customers who are, you know, utilizing the mainframe for core business, one of the things that um, they are most concerned about is their ability to sustain right. that platform right. for decades to come. 
So in order to do that, you really have to think about the people who run it, the people who manage it, the people who solve you know, issues when issues arise, which you hope are minimal. Yeah. But when they arise, they can take a business down and we need skilled people. So how do you get skilled people in a complex environment skilled up in time to be ready to take over for those who might be retiring? Mm -hmm. You know, in speaking with customers, we've discovered that They've relied on the same people for decades to manage those environments. Right. Obviously, they clearly had a career path in uh, mainframe, and a career path in mainframe is so robust. And um, and and what we want to do is we want to be able to relay that message to young people coming into the industry, yeah. so that they know what the mainframe does in the world. Because everybody wants to work on something that matters. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that we have failed in the past few decades to really relay the value of the mainframe and companies are actively working on ensuring that that value message um, and working on something that matters is heard and understood by young people. So one of the ideas that we had at Broadcom in recognizing that there's a huge gap um, from a very senior people who may be retiring in 20 years or 10 years mm -hmm. or two years, right? And the amount of time that it will take to really raise up a mainframer. We thought about our part in that at Broadcom. What can we do to contribute to the ecosystem yep. to solve the problem in partnership um, with other vendors in partnership with our customers. And the idea was that we would attract the right type of individual to the job. And how would we think about that individual? Someone who has technical acumen and the ability to love working on complex problems. Right, right. right. You know, to, to learn the mainframe space once we attract the right person, we can find a path to grow them if we contribute in a meaningful way. And that could be courseware, right? Mm -hmm. So we could deliver courseware, we could provide mentorship, yep. right? And we can also partner with a customer and ask a customer to help us. Why don't you take this person we've trained and maybe allow them to work in your environment for a while right. so that they can learn what's critical to you. Yeah. And that aspect of it, the getting a person on site at the customer to really learn how the applications work and why they care, yep. right, is really going to make a career path for somebody in the mainframe. Yeah, I think all of us, no matter what walk of life we come from, if we've got a sense of purpose and yeah. a sense of value, then we're going to stay focused, we're going to stay for long term. Now, the thing that really impressed me about the program you're running is there's a significant number of young girls coming through the program. Uh, and, and, and that reminds me that you took part in a breakfast this morning oh, for women in IT. Yeah. So I was really, really excited to see the number of young girls that have come through this thing. I had a couple of them on, on camera earlier today. Um, and uh, they also attended the Women in IT breakfast. Uh, tell me about the breakfast and, and what was your sort of key takeaway from it? Oh, sure. What was your general sense of it? Sure, we certainly have um, a large group of people coming through this Vitality program that I've described mm -hmm. where we are taking them through the curriculum. And some of them are women, young women. And um, this morning's breakfast, was really eye-opening for me because starting in uh, the mainframe space over 20 years ago, I found myself being the only woman in a room almost all the time. Right. Um, and really, there wasn't anything yeah. to promote women available. Um, to, to promote intelligent women to believe that they have a path and space mm -hmm. to grow mm -hmm. in mainframe, but today's breakfast was incredibly eye-opening because there were nearly a hundred women in that room. Wow. That means that we have attracted so many women to the mainframe yeah. space that we are no longer the only ones in the room. Yep. Yep. And showing a young woman who is exploring mainframe in our vitality program for the first time that they can see themselves reflected mm -hmm. in other people is so, so important uh, indeed. to motivate them, yeah, right? Yeah. To, that they that this is for them, there is space for them here. I, I think it's critical for the, for the community as a whole. Uh, I mean, not just humans, but particularly the, the business community and the, the technology community around the space of mainframe to, to see that balance. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think it's done us any good just to have room for boys playing with these things. Um, now, one of the things I noticed with this was that all of your colleagues are talking about the development of these programs and in fact one of your associates is working all the way down to kindergartens and kids doing coding and so forth on the other end of the yes. spectrum 
So I think, you know, for me, I think for, from, from Broadcom's point of view, this seems to be a really great investment they're making that allow their, their staff to, to do these programs and support it. And I think from society's point of view, to have young women coming into the technology and business space working in mainframes is going to be a whole nother view on problem solving that I think maybe the, the men have, have sort of had control of, but not it's necessarily always, Diversity you know. is good in any Indeed. situation. Yeah. Diversity is critically important, actually. Mm. Um, and, you know, it's obviously a known thing and it's been studied a great deal. How do we get it so right. wrong for so long? Right, right. Thing? Well, I, I, yeah. I think though it has to do with um, making an attractive opportunity available and it has to also to do with mentorship, mm -hmm. right? And the understanding that there is diversity of thought yep. and um, bringing diverse people into Indeed. a situation um, needs to be supported and fostered by companies. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the responsibility of every company, you know, to be thinking about Absolutely. that. Not to put somebody in a role just because they are diverse, but yeah. to put someone in a role because they're right for it and the diversity, yeah. you know, can contribute. Right. Well, that's definitely, that's definitely part of what I've seen yeah. from the community here at Share. It's like people with the right attitude, birds of a feather, they, they, they're looking to solve common problems across different industries with the right tools. Yeah. And I, I think this is where your Vitality program with all the relevant constituent components of it has, has been a great success on that and I can't wait yeah. to see it scale up. You mentioned something earlier on as a part of that and that is in diversity um, and, and bringing different points of view and, and responsibility to this. You mentioned something earlier about um, you know, there's a responsibility that lies with the customers and the end users and that they should also own part of the challenge of, of building that skills, yes. uh, uh, you know, preparedness yes. and readiness, but also the, the transition knowledge on yeah. as well. I'd love to get your thoughts on, on what that actually entails. Actually, this uh, uh, Broadcom's Vitality program is built on the premise that it's a partnership, mm -hmm. um, that raising a mainframer, right, it takes a village, yep. right? Yep. Like so that. we're happy to do our part. We're happy to bring our expertise in to create curriculum and material of complex, you know, solutions mm -hmm. that we offer and to take them through weeks and weeks of on-site, in-person, classroom-style yeah, yeah. training, build relationships with our experts. But once we, we do that part, right, we get to a point where we need to know that we have a partnership with our customer or our end user, and that our customer and end user are in it with us, and that they're willing to also adopt that yeah, person yeah. into their site and to assign a good mentor, not a mentor in name, Right. But somebody who right. really does know how to pass on knowledge and, and will embrace that person and embrace the opportunity, right, to, to train someone. And this program itself, you know, holds our end users and our customers accountable because we're holding ourselves accountable, yeah. right, to do our part. And if we do this together, I think this long-term benefit is just outstanding and the relationships that the, the, the employee potentially gets hired by that customer right, has a job and a relationship with experts in the space that they've studied. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Wow, what a great note to close on. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to, to get to know you, Deborah, me and thank too. you so much for making time with me. Congratulations on an amazing yes. event with Share 2019. It's been great. It's been uh, great here. I'm having a great time here in Pittsburgh, and uh, I, I, the sense that I'm getting from this is it just gets bigger and better every year, it does. and that the community continues to grow, and in and, and, and many ways, uh, uh, through the great efforts that you personally and your, your peers around you, and certainly Broadcom as a brand and CA prior, have brought to this, and, and I think the future is bright in so many ways that I get very excited about this. So, um, as a parent of a 15-year-old son and an 18-year-old daughter, I, I think they're, they're growing into a world that's going to be more and more exciting by the day. Yes, I agree with that. Well, thank, thank you very you much. So it's been much. great to see you. Great to, great to see you as well. Thanks.